So today I've got a really exciting addition planned, a UK-US alliance with the wonderful Janine Spendlove. And what we're going to do is, is it this pattern here? And we're each going to do a version and show you how we get on. And I think it's going to be really fun because it's quite rare, isn't it? That you see different versions of the same pattern made up. And we're doing, myself and Janine, are doing this in collaboration with the Vintage Sewing Pattern Company, Jill and Dawn. So it's a wonderful collab of vintage sewing loving women. <laughs> And I had to confess that I can't really take credit for it being... Oh, don't, don't, no, don't, no, no. Um, can't really take credit for it <laughs> entirely. It was... Uh, it's not very comfortable. It was Janine's idea, but I was quick to hop onto it. <laughs> And actually, it's been lovely so far. Janine sent me a straight off, oh, which version do you want to do? And actually, as soon as I saw the pattern, there was a ver like normally I'd be like, oh, no, you choose, you know, what, what, what we're like, women, you choose, no, no, you, <laughs> no, you. But in this instance, she said, do you choose first? And I did, <laughs> because I really wanted to do I really wanted to do uh, this pattern here, the one with the <laughs> little triangular flags. So, he said, can I do that one? And she said, oh, that's the one I was least drawn to, so yay. <laughs> Are you going to sleep on my lap? Or oh, just went swimmingly, she's so lovely. So, I am going to do the one with the the little flags it sort of reminded me of like it could almost be like a flower fairy couldn't it and i kind of wanted to do like a flowery blouse like with a green they call sepals something like that mm, pixie like a little daisy or something and you know as soon as i thought that i had this memory of seeing like a photo of myself as a child and in a sea of lacy white dresses and girls in white tights i seem to be wearing a bright yellow dress and lime green tights i said to my mother <laughs> you know <laughs> what's the meaning of me standing out looking unusual and she said looking all hurt oh you were supposed to look like a daffodil. So when I found myself wanting to make a flowery blouse with a green sepally <laughs> top, I thought, I know where it came from. <laughs> it was inevitable, really, that I was going to turn out like this. But it's actually not what I'm doing. I am doing that blouse. But where's the fabric gone, Rabbit? Are you sitting on it? Hmm? I'm sitting on it. So I'm actually going to use this fabric and I'm using it because it's a true vintage 1940s fabric. I thought this little blouse doesn't take out much fabric so I'm like, actually it is perfect for just using a little remnant where you haven't got very much of the fabric which is really good for vintage fabrics where you might not have very much of it. And I also thought it will look really pretty, won't it? Uh, well, <laughs> we hope. So I'm going to make this. And having gone on about, you know, myself, <laughs> I think it's time that we tuned into what Janine is up to and what she's going to do. Hi, I'm Janine Spendlove, and I'm really, really excited about this opportunity to do this collaboration with Samantha and with the Vintage Sewing Pattern Company. I, oh, and this is Samwise, one of my two pugs. Like Samantha, this is also, my channel is also a channel ruled by dogs. You'll see that probably throughout the course of the video, Rosie, my fawn pug, not pictured right now, loves to sit in my lap while I sew. Sam loves to sit in my lap while I'm doing computer work or while I'm recording on the camera. Um, by way of introduction, from my accent, I think you can tell I am not from the UK, I am from the US and uh, currently live around the Washington DC area to give you a bit of a pinpoint. So I am on the East Coast 
And the version of the blouse I'm going to make for today is this one right here, the one with the, the two interesting little cutouts on it. And I am actually going to make two versions of that. And the reason is that this pattern is for a size 32 bust and I am a 36 bust. So I have concerns that it is not going to fit me. So the first version I'm going to make is in this lovely knit, this yellow knit yellow is my favorite color. A friend of mine gave me this um, small remnant and I think I should be able to eke out just enough for the blouse with some clever cutting. And so even if the blouse ends up being too small, because I'm going to make the first version out of a knit, I should be able to still get it over my head and onto my body. We'll see. The other version I'm going to make is this adorable Halloween vintage reproduction print. It's not an actual vintage fabric. It is definitely a reproduction. I got it from Joanne Fabrics this past Halloween season. And because I figure it's never too early to start sewing for Halloween, I'm going to start sewing in January for it. Um, the other, the reason why I want to try it is because it's going to be, it's a woven and it's going to be a bit heavier. And I'm I'm going to have to do, the directions don't say anything about closures, what kind of they do. They mention a welt. I'm not really good at reading vintage patterns. This is another way you're going to see a difference between me and Samantha. Um, I need lots of instructions, lots of photos, and if there's a how-to video out there, I need that too. I, I'm still, I still feel very new to sewing. But one of the things I'm going to do is put a little zip in the side so that I can get it over my head and onto my body. And that is who I am and this is what I'm going to be doing and I'm going to pass it back over to Samantha. It's great to meet all of you. This is where my two supervisory pugs hang out. I'm right in front of the space heater. Rosie, Sam, hi guys. When I was watching this, and I hope Janine won't mind me saying, what sprung to mind was E.T. I mean, E.T. was very cute. Back to another sewing room with dogs in it. This is how I started out with Pixie helpfully acting as a scale guide so that you can see how little fabric I actually had. It's a remnant of pretty 1940s paisley cotton fabric but I had as you see very little of it and because it's a true vintage fabric it's also a very narrow width but I did manage to cut out all the pattern pieces despite having a little hound if she had to move onto the sofa so that I could cut everything out I did have that little overlap there poor things it's just too boring for them once I start sewing it's a tough life they lead so I'm doing this version with the petals around the neckline so there's a center petal and two side petals and each of them are cut out in double fabric and stitched around the edges leaving the top open and then it's time to stitch the pieces together and this is the side seams which run uh, around the underarms and under the sleeves as well because they grow on sleeves and you do leave an opening on the left side of the blouse for fastenings because it's uh, tighter at the waistline and then the back seam is also stitched up to an opening because it's a back opening blouse and I also stitch the neckline petal pieces together right sides facing and leaving an opening at the top because each piece and if you remember there's three a center petal and two side petals and you just turn them right sides out like this make sure that the point is nice and well pressed out and this is one of the side petals and now I'm just doing the center petal which is a larger symmetrical petal so just stitching the seam with right sides facing before turning it out and then once each petal is stitched and turned out with the 
opening at the top, I give it a good press with the iron. And then I pin each of the petals onto the neckline of the blouse, right sides facing, uh, right sides up. And you can see how the side petals sit really nicely, really shaped nicely into the centre petal. So the centre of the centre petal is matched to the centre of the blouse and then the edges of each petal match and then you make a huge long strip of bias binding and wrap it around the top of the petal again right sides facing and that's going to be stitched to hold the petals in place and then the bias binding will extend all the way around the back of the blouse as I'm just showing here and down into an opening that's left at the top of the back of the blouse and I'm just thinking which buttons to use and I know I should use the yellow ones because they are the right size and the chunky green ones are a bit big and chunky but look at the match the colors are absolutely exact the green the little red and blue flowers within them echo the flowers of the paisley exactly so i was kind of dithering here and i just kept getting drawn back to the green buttons even though i know they're too big and chunky but what a match it's 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 a match made in heaven oh and then the sleeves I also had to make more bias binding. It's almost as bad as the walkaway dress, isn't it? I had to make more bias binding to go around the sleeve edges as well because they're also finished in binding. And I also needed to cut fabric, at least this time on the straight of the grain, just to make a placket at the left side of the blouse, which is going to be joined by snap fasteners. So now I'm pinning the petal shapes in place on the neckline and then I'm going to pin the bias strip that I've made over them kind of sandwich the whole thing with the bias tape and then stitch around the neckline all the way around the front over the shoulders and then down the back neck opening and this is a point about the amount of fabric required. I did need that little bit extra that I had after pinning out the pattern pieces. So if you were to use a remnant that literally those pattern pieces used up the entire remnant, then you might get into trouble unless you used bought by a strip and you'd at least have to have a little bit of extra fabric for the placket. And the placket is needed at the left side opening because the blouse is fitted at the waistline, which I found quite interesting actually, because <laughs> you wouldn't tend to see this in a modern blouse. It kind of set me off thinking how modern shirts, they're either loose and unstructured to fit all sizes, or they're made of stretch fabric and fit your body exactly. And I thought, actually, this is one of the things that I really like about vintage patterns is that you don't have to choose between completely loose and unstructured and being, you know, enveloped in lycra. Anyway, so here I am just stitching on the bias tape and see the petals being sandwiched between those layers and then that bias strip will be folded at the neckline and slip stitched down in place and literally this is how much fabric I had left when I realized that I needed to cut shoulder pads for the blouse so I had to cut my shoulder pads from fabric that I normally use for doing twirls it's a very very cheap cotton but I thought it'd be all right for shoulder pads and the instructions for the shoulder pads were to cut a circle eight inches in diameter you can see I'm improvising with the plate which is just slightly less than eight inches and then I cut around the circle that I've drawn through two layers of the fabric 
and then I take a piece of wadding and fold that double and use the circle that I cut out of my 12 fabric as a template to cut a circle out of the wadding, slightly smaller circle out of the wadding. And the pattern suggests you put a little bit of extra stuffing right in the center of the shoulder pad and fold it over like this. And I'm actually just, this is just to show you, I'm going to deconstruct it to sew around the edges, leaving a gap. And uh, here it is, and I've turned it right side out. And then I'm just going to slip stitch that gap together to create my shoulder pad. And as I did with my blouse last week, just sew a couple of semicircles around the shoulder pad so that all those layers are held in place. And now for the last bit, my least favourite part, which was to create the rouleau loop for the buttons at the back opening. And I struggled with this special rouleau turner. I struggled and I struggled and finally I gave up and used the safety pin and that work for me and here are my rouleau loops as if it just took a second to create them which it didn't and showing you with the rather too chunky buttons on the back of the blouse with the rouleau loops and also with my shoulder pads stitched in and that's what the back of the blouse looks like and at the left side of the blouse there's just this little opening and you can see I've stitched the placket in place and slip stitched the edges and then it's just going to be held together with press studs so that you can get it on over your shoulders and then obviously do up that little placket and that's what the hem of the blouse looks like with slip stitch in place and then we're going over to Janine now who's showing you something that I forgot to which is the waist darts front and back and then she is stitching her neckline option which is the lovely cutouts around the neckline and you can see her here just stitching the bias binding around those cutouts and something I hope you'll find interesting about this video is the different approaches that Janine and I take. So I follow the vintage pattern exactly and Janine has introduced some really nifty modern touches to her sewing, especially in her choice of closures and fastenings. All right, the neck holes are complete and I have got to say I am much happier with them. I think that these look more like the illustration. I think they suit me better. Um, yeah, I'm much happier that I went with uh, much smaller holes than what I have there. I also think that using the quilting cotton with the, the cotton bias, although given this was store-bought, it's probably polyester. but. Um, yeah, so now I'm going to construct the rest of the box, uh, which will entail shoulder seams, side seams. I'm going to put this little zip in right here so that I can get it over my shoulders without having to be a contortionist. And um, on the back, I'll show you when I get there, but it's going to be open down to this notch and I'm going to put a little hook and button. Not a hook, it'll be a loop. But I'm gonna use an elasticized loop because it's going to be a very close necked thing and I don't like to feel choked out. So I'm gonna use an elastic loop so that there's some give when I wear it. And off to sew. On the sleeves, it wants you to use bias tape, but I just, I do a lot of dolman sleeves uh, in one of my favorite dress patterns and I just fold it over twice, so that's how I'm doing this sleeve. Now to insert the zipper. The zipper I'm using is one that you can tell has been used before. It was pulled out of another project and I fully believe in keeping perfectly serviceable zippers and clasps and clips and things like that because if I can reuse them I absolutely will. 
So I don't pin my zippers on. I used to hate doing zippers. And then a long time ago, I discovered this thing called, not a long time ago, last year, I discovered this stuff called Wonder Tape. And it was totally game changing. It's a water soluble tape. So I just use it to tape the zipper on in place. And then the first time that I wash the garment, the tape washes off, but in the meantime, it holds the zipper down perfectly for me to sew it in place. And it has been absolutely game changing for zipper inserts for me. And now I have to do the fun part where I gotta pull this backing off of it and it's always hard. If you hear the weird snoring in the background, that would be the pugs. And now it's time for the reveal, Janine's reveal followed by mine. And look how cute this blouse looks on her. I love those little cutouts, the neckline. I think she's right to make them a bit smaller than her first top but they both look very very pretty and Janine did decide not to use shoulder pads like I did because she says she is tall and broad shoulders whereas I in my dwarfy little state did use shoulder pads and I think all the neckline options for this blouse and there were three other ones of course there's a beautiful close-up of those little kind of petal flaggy shapes yeah all the neckline options for the blouse were really pretty and those are my buttons with the Rulo Leap closure that was recommended in the pattern but was quite a nightmare to do and I do think Janine's idea of an elasticated loop in one button has a lot to recommend it and we also chose different side fastenings for the blouse shapes so that it tucks in without any unflattering excess around the stomach. Thank you so much for watching us and thank you to the Vintage Sewing Pattern for the company. Please like and subscribe and see you next week. We're really exciting. <coughs> oh, now dogs don't squabble. Squabbling about who's going to be in front of the camera. So today we've got a really exciting... <laughs> so today we've got a really...